Hey guys, my name is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. If you watched my last video, the video called Big Clue to When the Market May Bottom, where we showed the federal funds rate correlation to the S&P 500, we talked about how the S&P 500 tends to have a delayed reaction to the pivot point for the drop in the effective federal funds rate. And if you haven't watched that video already, please watch it so that you understand what I'm going to talk about in this video. There is a correction that needs to be made to that video, a very important correction. And so I'm making this video just to make this one correction. Everything else in that video is still valid except for these two dates right here. And right now I'm just gonna flash back and forth between the old dates and the new dates. This is the corrected dates. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They are dramatically different than they were before. Previously, we postulated a pivot in the federal funds rate around March of 2023 and a corresponding bottom in the S&P 500 around July of 2023. So why am I now showing you that the pivot that I postulate to occur is actually more like November 2024 with a bottoming in the S&P 500 indicated by this orange vertical line around September of 2026. That's a huge difference of two to three years for each of these different lines. So first of all, I want to apologize because I did not catch this. Basically what happened is I believe I've found a bug in TradingView. Now I'll walk you step-by-step step through what happened, how I caught it, a subscriber that helped me immensely, and what this means for the results and the conclusions we made in that previous video. And part of the reason I wanna to jump to making this corrective video with the new correct dates here, with little black boxes around them, just to highlight them, is because that video did gain quite a bit of popularity. It definitely started uptrending and becoming one of my more popular videos in recent times. So it just becomes all the more important for me to get this corrected data out there. So what happened? Well, I logged into my YouTube account and I started going through some of the user comments. I do that usually every couple days. And I read this comment right here from KK. And thank you so much, KK, for making this comment, actually both of these comments, because it led me to figure out what was going on and it actually ultimately led to the creation of this video. So he said to me, why are your dates at the bottom messed up between the blue lines and the orange lines? In the year 2000, the blue and orange lines are two years apart, but in 2023, they are the same relative distance on the screen, but only a few months apart. And so I was like, what is this guy talking about? Let me take a look and I'll show you what he's talking about. The distance between this blue line right here and this orange line right here, let's take that as one unit of distance. Well, where else on the chart do you see approximately this one unit of distance? Well, right here and right here. And this is what he's referring to. He says the 2000 gap. You can see that the date of the pivot, this blue line is October 2000 and the corresponding bottom of the S&P 500 is September 2002. Two years occurred between these two lines. And so let's look at the more recent projection of the pivot and the possible bottom of the S&P 500. We have a March 2023 pivot and a July 2023 bottom. Well, that doesn't quite make sense, does it? Because the distance between these lines is about the same, and yet we had a two-year gap between these, and we have just a couple-month gap between these. I'm going to do my best to really quickly here show you why that happened. And I do believe this is actually a bug in the TradingView software. I guess I'll have to write them a message and bring this to their attention. Unless there's something that I just am missing. Maybe I am wrong and maybe I just don't understand how this works. But to me, it looks really messed up. So I'm going to pull up the actual TradingView chart here. This is it. This is where I made the video from. And obviously you can see I have a ton of vertical blue and orange lines which have dates down there. Now there's so many dates going on that it kind of obfuscates the actual x-axis and it's hard to see the regular labels. So this is why it was difficult and I didn't spot it because I actually had my dates all covered up here. Now the effective federal funds rate as I covered in my last video only updates itself every month. It's a monthly reported statistic. It does not have more frequent reporting than monthly. And as you can see right now, I'm in the monthly mode. But when I had 
worked on that chart and when I had presented that information to you guys, you can see I was in weekly mode. Now that shouldn't be a problem, but apparently for TradingView, it seems that it may. And here is why. This is the easiest way to show this. I'm gonna hide all the lines in the chart. Now you can see the axis labels much more clearly and you can see that they progress at an even rate. That is up until we hit the present day. And after the present day, they decrease in rapidity. So here's 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and then 2024, way over here. So 2023 would be right here in the middle pretty much. Obviously, that is not the right time scale. Now to really exacerbate this, let's go down to the daily time span and you'll see exactly what's going on here. Look at this, you have yearly changes. Here's a three-year gap, three-year gap, three-year gap. You'd expect a three-year gap to be right here, but no, we have, look at it, 2023 is way over here. Well, that's wrong. How can that be when we were just moving in three-year gaps every inch on the screen here? Suddenly now there's this like three-inch gap and you have a two-year gap. It doesn't add up. And the threshold for where this changes is the present day. I don't know why that's the case. All I can observe is that we have the effective federal funds rate, which only updates monthly. So the next thing I tried was, hey, let's check the monthly chart. And sure enough, everything lines up perfectly. So now we're progressing by three-year intervals, 2021, 2024, 2027, 2030, as you'd expect, even spacing and even intervals. So the conclusion here is that the future portion of the graph, I guess many people don't use that because this bug, this seeming bug has never been caught apparently. The portion of this graph that lies in the future does not scale correctly if you have chart data that only updates on a monthly interval and you're viewing it in another time span. If you view this with weekly candles, daily candles, or any other candle other than a monthly candle, and I realize that these are not candles, this is just a line chart, but it's still based on the same intervals, you will get incorrect data. Now I know that TradingView could fix that. They could make it so that on a weekly basis uh, or on a daily basis, it scales the future time axis the same as it did the past. But for whatever reason, I think a bug, it doesn't do that. So that is what happened. And then add on top of that all these labels like this and it gets a little tricky to see what's happening. So that's the explanation for what happened. So even if that's not my error, and maybe it is, maybe I missed something, I apologize immensely for that misreporting of that date because a lot of people have looked at that video and seen those dates that I had put. Again, the dates that I had put there were 2023, March and July for the pivot and the bottom of the S&P 500. And now we're talking November 2024 for the pivot and September 2026 for the bottom of the S&P 500. That is an enormous difference, shockingly different. So I do apologize immensely for that. I'll have to just look really carefully at the charts. I never fathomed that the future time intervals would change on a chart and with software that's so reputable and used worldwide and renowned, like every expert trader uses TradingView and I can't believe that this hasn't been caught before. So anyways, let me know if I'm wrong because I can have that too. If I'm wrong, I'll own up to that for sure. All right, so that's enough on what happened and why. But again, a major, major thank you to the user KK right here in my comment section who is literally the one reason that I noticed this. Not any other person noticed this issue but KK. So thank you so much. All right, so now that that's out of the way, now that you understand what happened there, Let's talk a little bit more about this chart with these changes and what does this mean? So again, we're looking at the corrected information right here, November 2024 for the anticipated pivot of the effective federal funds rate. And again, watch that last video for how I came to choose this. It's essentially just looking at the patterns that we have observed and approximating. This is by no means exact where we think that it's possible the next pivot could occur. Now, I'm kind of blown away by the fact that it could be so far in the future. I mean, this is 
what, two years from now, literally two years from now, um, I'm saying that we may pivot. And I did not change the distance of these lines or anything. I kept it the same because I don't want to be biased just because I saw new dates appear down here. I'm keeping the curve that I drew here, both on the S&P 500 and the effective federal funds rate. I kept them the exact same as the previous video. So all that changed was the dates that TradingView was misreporting. The actual amounts that would drop remain exactly the same. We're still expecting an S&P 500 low of approximately 2,500 or 2,100, these two gray lines, which would be a 48% drop from the top or a 56% drop from the peak. And that does not change at all. Only the timeline for how long it takes us to reach those particular goals is changed. So the figures here are exactly as they should be, and they have not changed at all. Nothing else changed other than the year and the month that these uh, events occur or that we postulate these events occur. And like I said in the first video, I could be wrong. I'm just putting it out there, kind of painting what looks to be a realistic picture. A lot can happen in two to three years, and so we'll have to see how this pans out. But I think it's really important, like I said in the first video, the main takeaway is to step back and to breathe and to realize you have more time than we may think. A lot of the time we get so caught up in stocks and charts and following the news daily that we think events are going to happen way faster than they actually do. You know, I bet you back in the year 2000 or 2007, when we saw half of this drop occur, we probably thought, man, that's a huge drop. It's over. So much time has elapsed. There's no way this could go down further. And yet what happened? You know, we had another enormous capitulation over the same amount of time yet again. So another whole year practically of drop occurred. And it's just an example of how we, I think, should take a step back and really be patient with the stock market because I don't think that it's going to unfold in a bottom in the next couple of months. Some people think we're already bottoming, but the Fed has not even begun decreasing the interest rate increases, let alone flattened it, let alone dropped it. And there's a delay with each of those actions. And there's a delay between the actual pivot and the bottom. So there's so much time that if you're expecting the bottom to be in the near future, like this year or in the coming few months, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed. It doesn't mean we can't have a rebound. We'll absolutely have a bounce up. We'll have a ton of those on the way and they'll seem huge at the time, but it looks to me like we may be making a massive new low around the year 2026. Remember the steepest portion of the drop for every recession occurs after the Fed pivots and actually begins reducing the interest rates, which is pretty mind-blowing. But that is the pattern that we see. And like I said, it's actually the exception for that to not be the case. Every time the Fed pivots, the stock market actually goes down, contrary to my belief that it actually would be bullish and go up. It's just not how it works historically. It's almost never happened. So we'll have a S&P 500 bottom theoretically in 2026. I would say give or take six months in either direction because this is such a big time span of forecast. So give me six months on either side of either of these blue or orange lines and we'll call that an amazing projection if that does come to be the case. But I do think that this is absolutely possible. It does make sense because you know back in 2000 it took two years for the stock market to bottom out. Back in 2008, it took almost two years for the stock market to bottom out. So we are looking at a potentially very long time for the stock market to finish bottoming. Now let's cover a couple of points that viewers have brought up that we can address in this new video since I am making one now. Some people said, well, you know, the S&P has already begun dropping and that's not like the past here. So it's already an incorrect forecast. And my response to that is, that's not the case always. Sometimes the stock market does begin dropping and only the final drop occurs when the Fed pivots. And you can see two examples of that right here back in 1970 and 1974. You can see that the, the stock market had already peaked way before the pivot occurred. And only after the pivot did it do its last sudden and very sharp and deep drop down to its bottom in June of 1970. Likewise, in 1974, we have the top way over here, way before the pivot occurs, and at least half of the drop in the S&P 500 occurred before the pivot. 
Then when the Fed pivoted on interest rates, we had the last super deep capitulation down to the bottom, super steep, the steepest part of the whole thing and the other half of it in a very short span of time, right coinciding with that pivot down to the bottom of the S&P 500. But like we have today, we've already got a drop in the S&P 500, and that does not mean that it's an invalid projection because that already happened two times back in 1970 and 1974. So it's not correct to say that you have to start your drop like we did in 2000, coinciding exactly with the Fed pivot or in 2007 and 2008. It does not have to be that way. So that was uh, question number one. Question number two is how does this correlate to the Bitcoin having event? And how does this correlate to the Bitcoin price? That is a fascinating topic. So currently Bitcoin is straddling this $16,000 line and it looks like it's ready to drop down another leg. I would not be surprised to see us hit $12,000 or $10,000 on a wick. Like I said in the last video, I think that any Bitcoin purchase below $14,000 is a great hold probably for the long run, for the many, many year hold, but it's anyone's guess exactly how low it's gonna go. We may see a wick down to eight or 10,000. I think that's possible, absolutely. But one thing that's fascinating is the Bitcoin halving event and how it correlates with this time scale. So the Bitcoin halving event is gonna be mid 2024. And usually there's a three to six month delay between the halving event and the next bull run peak. So we're probably gonna be looking at a next Bitcoin bull run peak around mid 2025 or so. Somewhere in 2025 is my guess for the next Bitcoin peak. But look at this, we have a stock market low postulated for September 2026. So I'll put my mouse cursor first right around where the middle of 2024 would be, which is the next Bitcoin halving event. It's gonna occur somewhere around here. And then I'll put my mouse cursor where the delay occurs and we have usually a peak right around here. So this is interesting because we're expecting a Bitcoin peak coinciding with 75% or more of the drop of the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is gonna bottom possibly in 2026. So there's gonna be basically opposing vectors going on here. We're gonna have a declining stock market, potentially, coinciding with a Bitcoin bull run after the halving event. And that is gonna be interesting and I do not have an answer for you what's gonna happen there. We've never seen that before. Bitcoin was invented as a response to the 2008 housing crisis right here, literally, Bitcoin's existence has only coincided with a secular bull run. This entire 10 or 12 years has just been endless bull run. We've never had a drop that has been postulated to be of this magnitude. So to have a Bitcoin halving event, which usually is the catalyst for a Bitcoin bull run, occur right smack dab in the middle of this drop in the S&P 500 is definitely something new. And then to have a peak, which would normally occur six or so months after that halving event, coinciding with the near bottom of the S&P 500, my God, that's anyone's guess. I do not know what's gonna happen there. It's almost like tug of war, like which force is going to be stronger? Is the stock market going to pull Bitcoin down despite its halving event and its next bull run? Is the next bull run gonna be lower than the current bull run of 2021? of 69,000? Is it gonna be a, a lesser peak? I mean, what's gonna happen here? Or is Bitcoin going to decouple and gain value as a store of value asset and actually gain despite the stock market collapsing? And perhaps, maybe, just like in 2008 when we saw this massive crash and people were probably looking desperately for a place to put their money to store it safely, we didn't have Bitcoin back then. We do now, and maybe in the next bull run and the next stock market crash coinciding, maybe they'll decouple because people will have a place to put their money and to store it safely. And maybe Bitcoin will be that safe haven asset and truly begin to show its colors and rise to well into the six figure price range. I'm gonna leave you with that thought because I don't have the answer. I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say. What's going to happen if this prediction comes true? If the S&P 500 bottoms in 2026 and we have a corresponding Bitcoin bull run that should be taking place just a year before that, what is going to pan out? 
Is Bitcoin's dominance over the stock market going to rear its head? And are we going to see all-time highs blowing the previous all-time highs out of the water with Bitcoin? Or is the S&P 500 and a recession slash depression level event going to pull it down to levels that are lower than we've seen or ever expected to see again, like a 6,000 or a $3,000 Bitcoin? Is that even possible? I think anything's possible at this rate. I think to say that impossible is to be blind to the nature of the market. The market can and will pull things out of its hat that you've never seen before. The market will do that by definition because the market will always fool the maximum number of participants. That's the nature of the stock market and trading. If you are with the herd, you're likely going to lose money and you're likely going to be wrong. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Bitcoin and this potential drop, um, all dependent on when the Fed pivots and when the stock market bottom is. And there's a lot of variables here, but I think it's a fun discussion and I think it's nice to talk about it and to think about what could happen because Man, I mean, there'd be a lot of people underwater if Bitcoin went down below 10K and it took two years to do so. That would be pretty devastational. And I want to be clear that I am a macro crypto bull. I think that Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to hold value for a very long time. And I do think that we will see new all-time highs absolutely for both of those assets. But the question at this point is, is when? Thanks very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.